Hey, I'm Nick Hathlon Gamer. Welcome back to Pro Cycling Manager 2019. This is Classics Rider episode number 34. We head into Perry Roubaix. Yes, the granddaddy of all classics, or at least cobbled classics anyway. It's a massive one. Now, even though things don't really intensify until part way in, we're going for the entirety of this one. This is one of my objectives. We are very well prepared. It's favorite race. So we enter with a potential plus four on the race day condition. Hopefully we get at least that. Be very nice. We pull off a plus five on the day. If we have a plus five, I would definitely give us a chance to win. Plus four, maybe. Plus three. I think we could definitely get a top 10 or a top 5. Anything less than that, though, could be a struggle. This race is major. In terms of favorites, Van Aert, Pollitt, Van Der Poel are the favorites. I am on that list, though. So, like I said, I've got a definite chance. And if the race day condition helps me out, we might just pull it off. Quick note, as things are loading up, uh, you may have noticed normally you would expect an episode on Sunday and start backing off just a little bit with this series instead of twice every single week. It'll be twice every other week and once the weeks in between. So I'm going to slow it down just a little bit. Um, Mostly just because numbers are down a little bit on this series compared to others. I think the primary reason for that was that this series started later than my other series did. The others came out day of release. And so viewership was where it was and it's maintained essentially the same level of viewership. Uh, every episode is pretty consistent now for the career mode series, for the stage racer series. But because this one started later, the level started a little bit lower, and it's maintained a lower level. Uh, so just that note out there, if you'd like to get it back up to a full two times, we, we definitely need lots of likes and see those numbers boost back up where the other series are. And if it does that, then I will happily go back to twice a week every week, and that would maintain seven days a week of Pro Cycling Manager. All right, here we go. Leader, objective, top three. I think that's reasonable. And the condition, plus four. So looking at that, plus four. We're looking at a 78 on the flat. I like that. The cobble, 85 today. Love that. Stamina, 85 today. Love that. And resistance, a 79. Very doable. Sprint, 70. Acceleration, 80. Yeah, okay. I can work with that. I can work with that. Now, there's a few little punchy sections slash mountain sections. The mountain ratings is 72. That's uh, not great, but the punchy one's an 85. So, uh, and most of the punchy sections are really early on. But you see there's definitely some cobble up, down, up, down, up, down, but it's not serious. Still making my way towards the front. Small breakaway for this one, and with over two minutes, I think those guys are pretty much set to hold position. So the four riders, Mulberger, Brentel, Jules, and Mulligan. So looking at their profiles real quick, Mulberger, no threat. Matthias Brandel, I don't know enough about them here but i think they are a punchy rider to begin with not bad ratings but certainly not a threat yules same and mulligan don't know anything on mulligan ag2r rider all right let's 
Now look at the team support that I have. So Romano is not going to provide much support. Romano is working at the front of the race now. Uh, by the time we hit the 6th, 7th, 8th cobbled section, Romano is going to be out of there. Visho also working at the front now. Terrible cobble rating. Good rider otherwise. So Visho is going to provide a lot of support now, but will fade pretty quick once we hit the cobbles. Velocity. Good condition today. Flossy should stick around a while, but with a weak cobbled rating, will fade. Padoon, 57 on cobbles, really? Okay, so again, we're looking at a flat rating, stamina and resistance to stick around and help for a while. Pibernick, okay, Pibernick actually could be around just about the longest 72 on the cobble rating 73 flat stamina 75 today but the resistance just a 70 so it's going to be a matter of yellow bar when the yellow bar is gone pibernick will get dropped but otherwise pibernick could stick around for a while and then we have williams terrible cobble rating not a very good flat rating but could stick around for a little while and that's it. So Pibernick, really the only teammate uh, who actually could stick it out for a while, and maybe Velocity. So I think I'd rather have Velocity, okay, not working at the front. That plus three race day condition. I think uh, Pibernick, Velocity are my guys. I mean, it's Williams. I want you to protect Pibernick. Pibernick, I want you to go to the front, but you're not going to stay there. You're just going to go maintain position now. And we'll set you to 76 like I am, just in case. And then Philosophy, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to set you to relay and then turn it off right away. So that's your position. I want you to stay there. Yes, you're there now. That doesn't mean they'll be there later. So that gives me control of Pibernick. Gives me control of Flossy and myself all in maintained positions near the front. I'd like to get somebody protecting Flossy. Let's go ahead and do so. Fisho, put you there. And then that gives me just Romano to use up first and foremost at the front. Those four riders out to almost six minutes. Let's go ahead and speed things along for a little bit until we hit the cobbled sections. We're about halfway there. I'm going to want to get water before we hit the first cobbled section because as soon as we do, the race is going to intensify considerably. It's pretty casual through here, and we still have 190k to go. This is very long, so stamina very much a factor today. My stage racer would just die <laughs> here at Perry Roubaix. This rider is built for it. See what they could do. Okay, we're getting a little bit closer. Not quite time to get the water, but very close. We're also down to 170k, so we're inside that window of 180, 120, and 60 being the targets. So this will be the first of three times to get water. And we'll get one of these guys on it, Visho. So I can fetch water. Okay, keep an eye on Visho as they drop back. Oh, we're already heading into it. He's not back up there yet. And he's not getting back up. It looks like he'll have to abandon the race. Holy cow, that was a fall. Let's go ahead and take the view from here as we have head through this first one. Breaks in the Peloton can happen at any moment. Three stars. 2K in length. Laporte with a puncture. I see a lot of those through this. Uh, race official really messing with the race here at the moment. Uh, breakaway already falling apart. What the heck happened? Just three riders left and one of them well off the back. So the breakaway down to two riders after just a single cobbled section. We've got one rider out the back. Romano hurting. Visho. 
still hurting Romano. Leave him on auto over. for now. Okay, you guys need to step up to about a 78 now. Try to maintain that position a little bit better. And I'll do the same. Next section, 2K again, three stars again. This is number two of uh, right about 30 sections. I don't know how the game has translated it, how many sections they'll have, but it's going to be a lot. Flossy, how fast are you dropping? You're okay. You are okay. Uh, Fisho has finished their task of getting water, so we're okay now. Romano, just about done. That low, low cobbled rating. Here we go. Four stars, 3.2k. Goodbye, Romano. We'll watch Romano as they do drop Pimpernick through, Flossy through. And we're going to see a lot of riders just look at that. I mean, Romano is just crawling over these cobbles. Look how fast he is dropping. The rider has just suffered a puncture. Crossing a cobbled section is a technical exercise. That's why some specialists don't hesitate. And this is a long section. 3K through here, and he goes out the back. Now, where is my support? Padoon? Got another one coming. There's Pibberdick. Pibberdick, go ahead and take over up here. Philosophy hanging on. Philosophy, work on recovery. Let's put you at an 80. And V Show is still here somewhere. There's Fisho near the back. So Padood already out. Williams already out. And the Peloton's shrinking. Pretty quickly. Visho is nearly done here, so he's trying to get back up here, but it's uh, it's not going to last. So we'll ride with uh, Visho now. We, we've only gone through, what, three sections? Or has it been four? Four sections. So four sections so far, and half the team is done. It's just the start of the day. Yet another flat tire. It seems to be catching. So Visho back up here to protect for a moment, but it's just not going to last. Three stars, 2.3k. Section number five. And we'll keep an eye on Visho here because I have a feeling Visho is going to be done in a moment. Some cobbled sections are very narrow, so it's important to be well positioned to avoid falls. And there you go. Fisho done right at the end. But we come out of the section, and for now, begins recovery. So it was a short enough section. And he hangs on, at least in the meantime. The next one coming up, 1.8K. Three stars again. So everything has been three to four stars so far. And Fisho, boom, done. Off the pace. Quickly dropping back. It's definitely not the only one at that much slower pace. You can see just about three riders right there. And I think he's about to lose contact. He's right on the edge of the peloton. And there you go. He's dropped. So now we're down to three. Uh, Pibbernick stronger than Velocity. Let's go ahead and switch these guys out. We'll use up Falassi a little bit sooner. Pippernick, you need to ride a little bit harder to keep pace. Next one is going to be three stars again. 2K again. Is this seven? Yes, section number seven. Another one coming real soon, section number eight. These guys are hanging on for now. Peloton is shrinking, 132 now. 26 now. A little bit shorter the next one, but still three stars. One and a half K. Very skinny through here. That's also why it's very important to be near the front. Now, uh, breakaway has changed. There's a new group here. It's Stefan Kung. Damar are both in it. Bosenhagen. Those are guys that can win from the break. We've got to be careful to not let them have too much space. Now, Alan Garrett 
Wisniewski, Turgis, I don't think they're going to hang in there. But Kung, DeMar, and Bosenhagen have good cobble ratings and good stamina. Very difficult to stay with. Matthias Brandl, the last one from the original break, has been dropped and is quickly falling back from them nearly two minutes down while we're three minutes behind. So uh, Brandl will be caught. Three of those riders will be caught. But there's a potential 1-2-3 finish in the breakaway if we let them get too far away. In terms of sections now, that is eight down. Another group of three coming up here. First one, two and a half K, four stars. This is going to do damage. Velocity, for example, this might be a little much for him. Over the cobbled sections, a rider has to up his awareness to avoid falling. And those that are on their last legs don't have the necessary physical... Let's see how quickly this is hurting Velocity. And we're not even 1K into this sector yet. Red bar gone. Velocity's going to start struggling. He's still close enough to provide some protection for now. And there's the end of the section. So Velocity kind of just hanging on to this next one is probably going to be the end for Velocity. And then Pippernick will take over. He's only going to last a few two to three sectors. That's a lot of time that I'm going to be riding alone. And that could be a real challenge for the day because the other top competitors, I'm sure they're going to have some help. There we go, into the Ehrenberg Forest, 2.2K, five-star sector. This is where the race really starts to ramp up. And there's the overhead bridge right at the beginning. They got it into the game, good. They do not have the, the left-hand side, though, that is open but not permitted. Oh no, that is the right hand side. Never mind, and it is there. I think you can kind of see it behind the uh, banners there. This is way shorter than it actually is. It's like 6K in real life, something like that. That sector, it's very long. There's the left hander out of it, and onto the wider road. That part's right. Uh, Falassi, meanwhile, though, he's fading. Peloton cuts in half through that Ehrenberg section. Three stars, 1.8k for the next one, and Velocity will be dropped. I need Pippernick to take over, and the pace is starting to pick up. See that 78 come out blinking. I'm going to set Velocity to auto. Ooh, there's a puncture for somebody. I didn't see who that was. And Velocity drifting out the back here. And there you go, Peloton down to 61. And I'm down to just one support rider now. So we've made it through, let's see, three, six, eight, eleven 11 sectors. We've got a, a huge sequence, almost non-stop now, all the way till the end, where we'll hit the, what do you call it, Autodroma? The track, the cycling track. We don't have those in the US, by the way. Anywhere. At all. I mean, somewhere. Somebody's got to have one somewhere, I would imagine, but uh, it's very much not a thing in the US. So, four stars, 3.6K. And we are definitely starting to get into that. Now we've got to make sure we don't start slipping back because the peloton is rather small and splits could happen. We're back up to 88. Flossy re made contact, but he's got no energy, so he will be dropped and is dropped again as we go back under 70 now. Another flat tire. Got to keep better count. I think this is 12. Yeah, 11. So yes, we're on 12. Remind me to keep better count. Yes, thank you for the reminder. Appreciate it. Ooh, we've got to change. Uh, Petit, Duel, and Ballerini have all gone off the front. Got to keep an eye on that. There could be an acceleration here that I need to get into uh, that I don't want to miss with the favorites. Favorites are still in this group, though. 
that group off the front, those are your guys on kind of the back edge of the top 10. 3 star, 2.2k, <laughs> Sector 13. There are two schools of thought on riding cobbled sections. Some will try to stay in the middle, while others will take to the sides, practically on the grass. Pepernick, where'd he go? Yeah, he's still there. He's still in contact, providing support. The Peloton, under 50 now. And we're down to just the six, and they're also down inside a minute. Another split there puts the Peloton at 39. Sector 14, four stars, 2K. And I'm getting shuffled backward at the moment. Thirty-two riders and Pippernick done. Pippernick done. So I'm gonna start feeling it here. And this is the worrying part because I'm gonna start feeling it sooner rather than later. There's the breakaway. Down to five riders up there, so they are fading, and I keep getting shuffled back. I'm stuck behind these couple riders. Degan Cold, one of them. Get back up to the front. Don't want to work, but I gotta make sure that I'm at the front so I don't miss a split. Sector 15 coming, three stars, just over 1k. Now, there's quality riders in that front group, but they've been out there a long time. I'm sure they're pretty tired. So, I'm gonna have to start working harder through these sectors to stay forward because I keep getting caught behind riders and shuffling backwards. And one of these times somebody's going to attack. 60k to go. I'm tempted to attack and get water almost right away. Three stars, 1.5k. Lost count, but there's still a ways to go. I'm gonna start moving forward, effort up. 25 riders is all that's left. It's vital to be at the front to avoid falls or breaks in the peloton. And we're through yet again. 56k, 23 riders now. Little break in between sectors. All right. Here we go again, three stars, 2.7K. This is looking like the time where you could kind of bridge some gaps, but it's still 53K out, so. And as the Peloton's down to 24, it seems almost like you don't necessarily want to attack it. You just don't want to get dropped. It's already a small group. So it seems like it's not gonna be necessary to form a new break. 21 riders. Another sector coming up pretty soon. I need to get water before long here. I'm trying to time it right. Just 20 left in the peloton and one last rider. And it's not the one I would have expected. Turgis, the last one holding out, but we've caught him. Five stars, 3k, and look how fast I start shuffling backwards without having that effort level up. We are really bouncing hard though, five star sector here. What's going on? 15 riders. Small sector coming up, this is the time to get water. Just 10. 12 riders in the group. I'm not even going backwards. I think I'm going to stay right at the front and get water, please. Yes. There's my drift backwards. 15 riders. Hand up. There you go. Return to position, and we're through the sector. 15 riders. I've got my water to go to the end. 40k to go. Energy-wise, hanging in there. A little bit tired. Now there's nobody out in front of us, so the good news is we don't necessarily need to attack anything. And behind us, contrary to popular belief, B 
because of our pace over the cobbles, we're just going to ride further and further away. So we don't necessarily need to worry about people catching us because we're not putting in an effort, an increased pace. Now, let's start counting down. Seven sectors to go. Speed things up for a little bit. Nothing's happening right now. It's kind of quick step doing the work. Two riders out front. Sepfan Mark, Bob Youngles. And here we go again. Four stars, but only 500 meters. Ooh, we're back up to 20 riders. <laughs> Spoke a little too soon on riders coming back at us. For the most part, they're not going to come. That group is close enough. So, Peter Sagan is here. Niels Pollitt is here. Pollitt was in the break, I think. Van Ert is here. Vanderpool, Peterson, Betty Alf, Van Barl. Niels Pollitt. And Kristoff. Do I want to join them? Counter attack by Peter Sagan. Okay. Half the group is attacking right now. I'm going to kind of take it easy, just make sure I don't get dropped. Oops, still one going off the front, but that is Kristoff. He's a good rider on the cobbles, but I don't think he's a big threat right now. Four stars, 1.4k. Oh no, I have a puncture. Oh, come on. The group was down to 13. He crashed off and he's not getting up. Terrible timing there. This late, 25k to go, and I get... I need to make up some ground. Those 13 are a minute ahead. I need to get off this group. I left that group behind. Coming up on another sector here in a little bit. This is not the area to gain the time back. It's on the cobbles. So close to the end. And I get an effing puncture. Three big sectors here, though. I can really gain some time back in there. But look at the wasted energy having to ride solo for a little bit. Tishpanut instantly ride past. I'm not going to get a top three. Oh, there's the group, though. John Degenkolb. I'm going to have to ride with Degenkolb for a little bit. I, I left him behind. I'm up to 11th, but I'm I'm not going to catch the 10. Your riders really should pay more attention to their choice of tires. Counter attack by Alberto Bichol. Dang it. We had a real chance today. That puncture just ruined our race. Front group. Oh, they're back together. Never mind. Last cobble section. Not much to this one. We're through it. 7k to go. Van Aert, Van Der Poel attacking. Oh, I'm missing all the fun. So sad. So sad. There we go. Entering the track. But I've missed I've missed the action here, so Bell Lap. 
And there, they finished it right behind me. So I finished one lap behind Sagan, Christoph, Vanderpool, Peterson, Betty Alsh, Debar, Van Ert, Stoyven, Paulet. Uh oh. Are these guys just entering? Uh, I still have 1.1k to go. Yeah, they're just entering the track. I am not grouped with them. So they just came onto the track. Eleventh place, Van Avermaet. I almost caught him, but he took tenth. I get eleventh place. Damn it! That is so disappointing. That puncture. The puncture was everything. I was looking good. I was looking real good. I absolutely would have been in that group. There was no reason. Van Avermaet dropped. Pollitt dropped. That would have left me with eight riders, right? Doesn't mean I was going to win, but myself and eight riders with. A 70 sprint and an 80 acceleration. Now, Sagan and Kristoff, those guys are sprinters. Very, very well could have won it. Wout van Ert is a capable sprinter. Better than the rest in that group. He, right, looks like, because he took 7th, looks like he had nothing left at the end. So, looks like I could have beaten him. And Stoyven, right? Stebar, not a great sprinter. Betiel, not a great sprinter. Peterson has that turn of pace. It was enough that he won the world championships. But probably in a sprint, I could have beaten him, which means I'm looking at head-to-head -head Vanderpool. He and I battling it out for third place would have been the most likely outcome. Most likely. I'm not going to say that, oh, yeah, I was going to win. Hello, Peter Sagan and Alexander Kristoff can sprint. They're actual sprinters. So I think I would have been battling Vanderpool and Peterson for third, fourth, and fifth if I had not taken that puncture. In the end, I have to ride solo to 11th. I passed a lot of riders to get back up there as I was just top 25. Fought back to get 11th, but still. That's very unfortunate. The timing you know, right about 30k to go uh, to get that puncture. And of course, the, the group was tiny by that point, so I was nowhere near the group. I was right at the front, right where I should have been. So, unlucky. Very unlucky. 11th, not a bad finish, but also very disappointing on the outcome. Now, in real life, team can't fault me. Puncture is a puncture. <laughs> they can't go, oh, that's a bad performance. But guess who's about to say, that I had a bad performance. Yeah. It would be nice. It would be very nice if in a future build of this game, FM, uh, FM. <laughs> oh, I've been playing FM again here recently. Uh, PCM 20, or in some recent, some soon to be upcoming edition, 21. If they started adding in something along those lines of some type of analysis of, oh, you had a crash. 3K from the finish. Which, uh, if you've seen my <laughs> Stage Racer series, that's going to be a thing. We've selected the following highlights for you. I'm not sure if that was on the one that you haven't seen yet or if that's the one that was the day before this one <laughs> coming out. Uh, whichever episode it was, yeah, there, there's going to be a crash. Less than 3k from the finish. Or like this. A puncture. Laid on. I mean, that it defines the race. Uh, certain things, right? Uh, I think they could be more dynamic in the way they eval evaluate your race. Not just... What's the finished position? There's factors that go into that, right? If you're riding solo for 70K because your whole team sucks so bad that they leave you alone long, long, long before the end of the race. Wow, look at that. That's a tight finish. So Vanderpool was very much in that, that top three, which means, honestly, I think I would have been fourth place. Most likely. I would have been sprinting it out there at the end. 
but it probably would have been for fourth. And these, that finish is like right behind me, by the way. I just crossed that line before they did. To get the bell up, because it's a lap and a half around. Sagan, though, very much deserves it. I end up 3 minutes and 52 seconds down riding solo there to the end, so they really upped the pace there in the final 10k, and I certainly would have had the energy to stay with it, so no problem. Uh, but like I said, based on the sprint of the top three, probably would have been fighting for fourth. Yeah, Vanderpool, better sprinter than I am. Benerson, I would have been right with him. Better acceleration, but he has an overall better top speed. I probably could have gotten out in front of him with these three, you know, the four of us away, but then those three pulling away in the final 200 meters. Peterson closing me down in the final 200 meters, but me ultimately ahead of him, most likely, but not necessarily. And then, yes, I could have beaten Betty All. Van Aert, capable sprinter, right? 75, but he didn't have the energy at the end, it looked like. Stroven, wow, I didn't realize he was as strong in the sprint as he is. These guys fell off the back, so I definitely would have been ahead of them. And then, again, so there you go. I finished 11th because of a puncture. Now, in real life, if this was reevaluated with some sort of dynamic evaluation, 11th at one of the biggest races of the year is a decent result. As one of the favorites, yeah, it's a bad result. But as somebody who's only just inside that list of favorites, right, it was fifth or sixth, and they were looking for a top three, but then the puncture happens, right, I think you'd go back and go, that's a fair result coming back to that. That's actually not half bad pulling that off considering where I was at the time, right, 25th, I recovered to 11th. So... You can't say it's a good result, because a good result would have been a top three. A good result would have been a top five. So how would a, some sort of dynamic evaluation work? Would have been good recovery. Good recovery is worth, I don't know, 10 points of progression, right? And manager satisfaction plus 1%. You know, it's, it's not like I'm looking for some sort of major score, but I think... I don't know. Uh, is that a good suggestion? And do you even think? Right? I'm not a coder, but I, I've I've done a little bit of mod work, uh, so I have some understanding, and I know some basics about code. So I know the if this then that scenario. There's got to be some way. The if this, then that. And if this be puncture, if this crash, then that. Updating to some sort of secondary objective sort of thing. The, okay, well, this didn't happen, but what did you then do instead? I think it would be possible. Let me know in the comments below if you agree with me. I mean, is that realistic? I don't think I'm going to come away with many points from that race after finishing just 11th, but World Tour, or 17th, and Super Prestige, top 10, it's not bad, it's not bad, but it's definitely not uh, ideal either, is it? Uh, but that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I know it was only one race, but it was one complete race all the way through. Uh, we're going to take a quick gander at the calendar. And we're looking at another race. We're going to catch just the end on that one, as I've got a chance. And then we'll jump into Liege, Bastogne Liege. And then 
we do our first ever trip to the Giro d'Italia. My stage racer just finished their first ever trip to this one. I won't tell you the result because I do know that that's in the next episode that you haven't seen yet. Uh, but this one, we're only going to focus on stages that we have any chance. So there's going to be a lot of missed, skipped stages as we're not riding for the GC. Uh, a lot of mountain stages that are going to absolutely kick my butt. But there's definitely some stages, you know, that have some sort of chance. Little punchy ones that aren't too intense. Most of those are early on. The final stages, though, big climbing stages. Big, big climbing stages. So uh, we'll be long out of contention at that point. I may ride for a KOM jersey. Fight for that. That could be worthwhile. Strong enough hill rating that we could easily win those sprints but then get dropped before the end it would be an interesting thing to do instead of just going for a few stage wins so uh, we'll see in the first stage or two what the team says about objectives but again we still have two races to do before that uh, i'll definitely get through both of those in that next race i don't think i'll do all of liege best on liege but we'll definitely do the last third to a half and just a little bit above where the mouse pointer is right now would be where we'll go live on that one but once again that's it for this episode i'm decathlon gamer be sure to hit that like button and i'll see you next time bye for now